Welcome back. This is still trending here on I-24 News. I'm Tal Heinrich. And sadly for us, for the last time, we're honored to have in the studio with us Dr. Limor Blockman, our sexologist Limor. I know that you're leaving uh, us. This is oh why I brought God. you this beautiful cake. This is so and, adorable. And um, you so can touched. join me. Of course. Take a spoon. But first you have Thank to tell you. us where yes, you're I will, leaving I will. us and why and where can we follow you next. Yes, absolutely. I'm moving back to Los Angeles. Angeles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving back to LA and um, you know just back to working there. Thank you. I'll, I'll eat it at, at the end okay. so I can speak. But yeah, I'm just going back to live in there and I really want to thank the I-24 News family. LA is lucky to have you. Thank you so much. But we will much. keep following you uh, although the time difference. But we can Skype you. you yeah, know? of course. Okay, absolutely. We'll it's 5 a.m. when you are on the air. So let's do this early in the morning. <laughs> we'll stay in touch. All right. Absolutely. So I, ha I understand that you have an interesting topic for discussion yeah. for us today. Athletic performance in sex. Absolutely. So we're always wondering, ever since the Olympic Games uh, commenced in Olympia, Greece in 776 BC, everybody's been talking about the connection. And according to the Greeks, of course, and according to Chinese medicine, the idea of abstaining from sex, you know, enhances aggression and frustration, thus, you know, enhancing performance. Right. So the idea is really to avoid, to abstain from sex in order to be more successful. Is and there truth? Is there truth in it? By the way, in the Brazilian 2016 uh, Olympics, 450,000 condoms were allocated right. for the, for the uh, athletes yeah, the to use. Is known for yes, a lot yes. of sexual activity. Yes. So, science, they took 15 athletes between the ages, it's, it was a very small sample, between the ages of 20 and 40, and put them on this two-day trial. Of course, they told them in advance that 24 hours before it, they could uh, have no sex with their partners, they should abstain, absolutely, including self-pleasuring, nothing at all. And then they took them on a journey that started with a, in the morning they had them a bike ride and see their, their ability. Then they had them take some form of a concentration uh, test to see how they perform. Then they had a testosterone test to see their measurements. And again in the evening, they took another bike test to see their performance. Then in the evening, they joined their partners and had sex. Their usual partner, and a specific, it's a specific thing to say that because if we uh, join someone else, not our particular specific partner, regular partner, it can we influence are, the outcome, your it results. It can influence, your... yeah, and it, and, it, and it can have a lot of impact on us because we try to uh, put, to perform and to right. do something in front of someone else. Way, Absolutely. And then the next day, they put them through the same test. In the morning, the test again, the, the testosterone test, and everything. And of course, what do you think that happened? Improve the results, <laughs> right? <laughs> Drastically. That's far from it. But sexual activity didn't really have an effect on their performance. They were actually doing rather the same with a difference of, yeah. Really? Yeah, with a difference of a little higher heart rate in the test of the bike test the morning after sex. I want to say something very particular. Women were not tested for post-sex post uh, endurance, which is very interesting. I don't know why, <laughs> why you guys decided to avoid this, but women were, weren't. And basically, they, they, what they concluded is that uh, people are affected only two hours before performance. So if you have sex, two hours before it, it may influence it. Otherwise, you can really, you know, take a breather and just don't you mean worry. A, you mean influence it in a bad, in a in negative a way? In a negative manner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, you know, the conclusion is really to each his own. Everybody can really decide on uh, what is, what is uh, good for them. But sex should be avoided, in my opinion, and based on an, a bunch of studies in, in this topic. If con concentration is imperative to your performance and sex is problematic and gonna throw you off, you better not do this. It's, it's really preferred not to engage in it. Another thing, if it affects your sleep. A lot of people really can't fall asleep after having sex. It, it becomes, you know, really a difficult night. And for that reason, they should avoid it. If it's against your belief, if, if you are a very religious person, and for instance, you're not, you know, confirmed with doing things like that, then it should interfere with your performance, and then that should be avoided. And if it follows a night of partying and alcohol or drugs or anything of that sort. Well, if you're an athlete, you shouldn't be having those as any well. Any <laughs> of these things. But if it's correlated with these things, then it should definitely be avoided. 
But, but, but I like the fact yeah. that you said that athletes should have one specific partner if they Absolutely. want to improve their skills, huh? Yeah. Listen to us out there, <laughs> all you athletes. Hmm. That is very true. With interesting manners. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dr. Limor Blockman, thank you so much for this fascinating discussion today, but all of them throughout these entire uh, couple of months, right? Yes, thank you and so much. And good luck, everybody. and you I can enjoy the cake. It. I will, I will. Because I Definitely. had it before, so take it your way. I will tell our viewers about some more interesting developments and stories in this field. Uh, here's the use of virtual reality that will make many singles out there quite excited, I should say. In Hong Kong, you can now go on imaginary dates in the city's annual Anycom and Games Fair, users can choose between four female models and spend a vacation with them in either Japan or Thailand, joining them on trips to cafes, hot springs, and even karaoke. Once they slot their phones into a plastic headset, they are then immersed on a day during which they can choose options for activities and, of course, the partner, as we mentioned. And promoters of this app, by the way, they say it comes to help singles practice their dating skills. Let's just hope it doesn't come at the expense of real human interaction. That's what I'm saying. All right, Keisha's return to music is in full swing, but that doesn't mean that Dr. Luke is done with his defamation case against the singer. On Saturday, producer whom Keisha has accused of abusing her attempted to subpoena Lady Gaga for a deposition in the case. Dr. Luke's lawyers had previously subpoenaed the singer for her tax exchanges with Keisha, but the copy she provided was so heavily redacted it was impossible to make any sense of it. Hans Zimmer is having quite a year, from touring the world with his orchestra to shredding his Coachella set, to providing Christopher Nolan with another winning score for Dunkirk. The composer is perhaps the film world's biggest rock star, which is why it's not surprising that he's taking on scoring duties for Blade Runner 2049, the most hotly anticipated science fiction of the year. The movie, by the way, hits theaters on October 6th. After receiving denial after denial from cities around the United States to his request to install a billboard with President Donald Trump depicted as the character from the horror film They Live, pop artist Mitch O'Connell got the go-ahead to install it on a main avenue in Mexico City, where it can be seen by millions of drivers every day. And in case you're wondering, the White House had no comment on that sign. All right, we're taking a short break now, but you should stick around because next we'll have an electro soul music performance in studio. The Tel Aviv-based Photo Taxis band will be here and sing us their song called Scissors. <laughs> 